exciting news, you guys. If you are a Trello lover or becoming a Trello lover, then you are going to want to make sure that you watch this video. And make sure you stick around to the very end where I'm going to tell you when you're going to get access to all of this. So I told you guys a few months back that I became finally an official Atlassian creator something that I had wanted for a very long time because I'm so obviously obsessed <laughs> with all of uh, Trello and everything that it has to offer. But I, I'm not disillusioned into thinking that that means it's perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect app platform software. I've said that before, I will keep saying it forever, but there is the best option for your current priorities. And then there's ways to get creative to make it work the way that you need it to in the ways that it's not necessarily designed to. Well, Trello has been listening, Atlassian has been listening to a lot of the things that people have been requesting and maybe complaining about. And I have had the ability along with a number of other people in a private beta group to try some of these things in advance. And they have just today given us the go ahead to share this with you. So. Oh, I'm so excited. So before we get into this, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial, upload, or awesome announcement from Trello. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, I have my premium training board Trello up here. I'm gonna be showing you all of these features. I also have some notes over here on the left, straight from Atlassian because I'm still finding my way around all of this too. I've only been in here for a little while and while I've been loving what I've been doing so far, I know I haven't seen everything. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm looking at my notes so that I could tell you guys everything that's being announced. So the first thing that I noticed when I came in here is that they have changed this upper ribbon. Okay, so yeah, this just looks a little bit different. It doesn't really work super differently, except for the fact that we can see not only are the people who are members on this board now farther to the left from the share button, um, but we can also see that starring the board as well as changing the visibility of the board have now moved over here to the right instead of being over here on the left. Not a huge deal, right? But the main thing that I noticed was the thing that was missing over here on the left, which for me was a moment of, freak out because I used those drop downs for recent boards, star boards, templates, like all the time. <laughs> and I was worried because I didn't know where they were. And I didn't know if it was going to be as easy for me to navigate around from board to board because I do that a lot, but never fear. They just moved it. So you may have noticed there is a new little floating box, I guess you could say down here. And this right here is the board that I'm looking at. But let's say I need to navigate to another board. There's two different ways that I found so far that I can do that. I can click this little button right here that lets me see all the boards and everything that I have access to, including that starred and recent section that I was used to up at the top. You can also navigate through workspaces just as easily up here, which is very nice. The only thing that I haven't found, and it's not that they're lost, they're just not as easy to navigate to as I remember it being uh, the other way, which is those templates. I create a lot of templates, and if you've been around the channel, you know I create a lot of templates <laughs> because maybe you have gotten access to one of them by uh, reaching out to me or whatever. So for me, I kind of wish that there was like starred recent and templates that they had brought that back in here, but you can search your boards up here at the top. And if there was a template that I needed to access a lot, I could just star it, right? There's not seeming to be any limit to how many I can have starred here. So not a huge deal. It just was a little bit different and kind of threw me. But let's say you're working through the board and you don't want to have to move your mouse to come down here. You can just hit B and it's gonna open up that panel for you in that regard too. Which honestly, I don't use the shortcut buttons that much, but I have found that to be pretty helpful. But that is just the beginning. This is just kind of the most obvious thing that you notice when you come in here. But what are these other two buttons and what do they do exactly? And that's the cool part. So let's go ahead and start with the inbox. So I'm gonna click on the inbox and it's gonna open up a separate panel over here. And from here, I can create for myself a to-do list, which I will then be able to drag around to any board that I need it to go to, or actually I don't even need to drag it. I can simply send it there straight from here on this panel. So I don't have to move around from board to board because I realize, oh, I have this 
brain dump idea or this to-do list item that needs to be on my content planning board, but I'm not on my content planning board. I'm on my command center board. I don't have to move around. I can just create it here and send it. Another thing that's super cool about this inbox is that there is now an email address that you can add to your contacts in your email clients, whether it's Gmail or Outlook or whatever. It's inbox at app.trello.com. And I will put that in the description as well. But now when you have an email, let's say a client emails you something and you want to create a card for that, but you don't want to have to go in and manually do all the things with the cards, or maybe you're out and about and you see the email and you want to make sure it gets captured on your to-do list. Well, you can now forward that email to inbox at app.trello.com and it will appear here. But not only will it appear here, AI is going to take information from that email and it's going to format it into the card. So if there was a due date mentioned for something inside the email and the body of the email, it is going to add that as the due date on your card. So it's like absolutely having a little assistant coming in and organizing things for you, which is so cool. This does also work on the mobile app. So the way I have found this to be most helpful on the mobile app is that when I'm out and about and an idea comes to my mind, instead of even going to a board or thinking about, well, what is this related to? I just go straight to the inbox and start kind of putting it in like a list and creating those cards like a list. And then the next time I'm at my computer and I'm organizing and thinking, and if you are someone who has looked at or used my simple to-do list template, if you haven't, it'll be in the description. I'll link a card to the video where I showed that. This can somewhat replace your mind dump. If you're a client, we can definitely sit down and talk about when you might want to use this inbox idea versus using the mind dump. So let's make sure that we definitely connect on that before you just switch over. But this is super handy. I also know that for iPhone users, you can use Siri to add these cards in the inbox. Now, this one was a huge bummer for me because I am not an iPhone, I'm an Android, proud Android user. And I did ask them in the community chat about this. I said, you know, is there any plan to make this available to Android? It's something that they want to do. I guess it's difficult to create this kind of API connection with Google or something. I don't know. So all of us can just kind of cross our fingers and hope that that gets ironed out because I have wanted the ability to speak into Trello for so long. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even think of when I didn't want to be able to do that. So iPhone users, you can do that now using Siri. Lucky you. I am definitely jealous of that. Android users, hopefully I don't know, the stars will align and we will get that soon as well. You can also send stuff here if you're using Slack. So if Slack is a part of your business tech stack, it's part of your infrastructure, you can also send cards into your inbox here from a Slack message as well. And if you are also a Jira user, which I'm not really, I have used Jira in my corporate life, but it's just not something I've needed in my own business. But this is also integrating with that new Jira lists feature. I'm gonna link to a video that one of my friends, Brittany, who is another Trello obsessive, <laughs> just like me, she did a video on this because she uses more Jira than I do. So I will make sure to link to her video so you guys can check that out. Okay, so you do have the ability to expand your inbox as well. You might have noticed before when I only had the board showing, it showed that I couldn't click on board, right? But once I open the inbox, I can click on board, which then expands it so that the inbox takes over everything. So that's kind of a cool feature because then you're able to see everything just honed in and really focused. But now I want to talk about the new panel that has so far been the most impactful for me. And that is the planner panel. So to get there, you're going to click right here. And from here, you are able to sync a calendar. Now, as of right now, you're only able to sync a Google calendar into here. I am more of an Outlook user in my business. And so I expressed that to them and, I, and it is in the plan for Outlook to be included in this. But there was a workaround I was able to figure out to get my Outlook items into Google Calendar so that I can still see them here, which took me a little bit of kind of finagling around, but totally worth it. So now I'm able to have that synced in here, connected that calendar so that I can see my day, right? And I'm able to come in here and actually schedule focus time for myself. And if you are an Outlook user, you know that they already had like a digital well-being functionality that would auto focus time for you. 
What's great about this is that it works both ways with the calendar that you have synced. So if you come in here and you schedule focus time, it schedules a focus time on the synced calendar. So that being said, if you are using this in like a corporate setting or with a team, when you schedule focus time in your own planner, it is going to block you out on your business calendar, assuming that's the one you synced, so that people will see that you're busy, you're focused, and they're hopefully not going to try to book over the time that you've set aside for specific tasks in your business. That is huge. Because the worst thing for me is when I set aside in my mind, I'm going to work on this, but then I don't think to go and block myself out on my calendar, and then somebody comes in and says, oh, I'm going to do a meeting here. And you know, that's fine, but then I don't always remember to reschedule the stuff that I needed to do in that focus time. And so this is a great way to really set aside that time and let your team know I'm going to be busy at this time, heads down, kind of getting stuff done. They don't see what it is you're working on. They just see that focus time. So in order to add things to your focus time, this is the part that I think is genius. You come over here to your, your board and you can, by the way, move from board to board while you're here and not lose your planner. So check this out. See how I can go in between boards and my planner is still here over on the left. It's that stable, static way for me to see what I'm supposed to be working on. But in order to add something to that focus time, I simply click to drag the card just like I would around the board, but I drag it over here and drop it into the focus time. But the absolute best part, in my opinion, because what worried me about that was that if I didn't finish that task in that time, I was going to forget it. It would be out of sight, out of mind. But the beauty is that that card doesn't actually move. It's not going away from the list where it was originally. It basically creates kind of like a mirror card. So just like those mirror cards embed themselves into wherever you've mirrored them to, it kind of works in the same way where this card is here. I can technically work it from there. So if I move to a different board and it's in my planner, I can still open it and work in it the way that you would a mirrored card, but it still remains in its original place so that I am able to go back to it if I didn't get it done in that focus time. And that is like, it's so cool. <laughs> and just like with the inbox, you can hide the board and see just the planner. So then you could just do this and have this on a separate screen or whatever to help keep yourself aligned for the week, which I kind of love that. One thing that I have personally wished for and actually expressed a desire for into the feedback loop was for me to be able to adjust this. So see how that inbox, you know, it doesn't take up so much real estate on the screen, so I can still see a lot more of my board. But by default, that planner, it really does. I mean, it goes like halfway. And when I'm screen sharing on, on the monitor that I'm on right now, that doesn't give me a whole lot of room. You can see that. Now, my other monitor is bigger, and so I can see more of the board, but still, I really don't need necessarily to see it this much. And so I have told them that I wish that I could kind of like just grab in the middle here and drag it one way or the other to give my board more real estate or the planner you know, depending on what it is that I'm working on at that moment. So that is something that they're aware of that, that I personally said I wanted. I don't know if other people feel the same way, if they're going to want that too, but I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So like I said, I have only scratched the surface with this. I may have missed a thing or two that is coming as a part of this update, but this is already pretty, pretty major, right? I, I'm so excited about this. I'm excited for all of you guys to have access to all of these things too. So according to Trello and Atlassian as of today, which I will be linking in the description, they're gonna make an announcement in April telling you when these new tools are going to be available to everyone. So keep a close eye on that. Keep an eye here on the channel. I will make sure to let you know here as well. And I'm curious which one of these things that you've seen in this video are you most excited to try? let me know in the comments. And as always, the online tools for your business do not need to be complicated and overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. I hope you liked that video and more importantly that you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a fellow solopreneur. And make sure you check out the description for links to how we can connect and maybe even work together.